Hey everyone, this is Homer Star Fan 13 and welcome back to the video game collection series. Yeah, I took a break over Christmas because I was uploading my advent calendar videos. But now I think I'm ready to sort of finish the series and just get it all out of the way now. So obviously today we're going to do GameCube games, which shouldn't take too long, so I don't have that many GameCube games, but let's just get on with it and I'll start what I usually do with the Nintendo games and start with the first part of Nintendo stuff. So we'll start with the Mario stuff. So should mention I actually don't have any Mario platformers, I don't have Mario Sunshine, so we're going to have to start straight onto the Mario spin-offs and well, we'll start with what I think is one of the best GameCube games, one of my personal favourite Mario games as well, uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah. yeah, I think this is probably my second favourite Mario Kart game. Mario Kart is definitely my favourite, but I, I do like Double Dash. I think it's obviously the most unique because it's got the two, the two people in the cars and I think it's got cool track designs like DK Mountain and those tracks. But yeah, I just think... This is probably the one I will go back to play a lot. Uh, I should also mention that this is actually... I think I got this one... I, this was actually the first game I got for my GameCube. And I think you can see there, and I can just show here. This comes with the exclusive uh, Zelda disc, which I believe has um, Zelda 1, 2, or Queen of Time, and Majora's Mask. I'm not into Zelda, so I don't really... That doesn't interest me that much, but I think it's still, it's still quite cool, and I'll still keep it for that reason. Next up, we've got the sports stuff, so we've got... Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Uh, Toadstool Tour. This is again one of my favourite GameCube games. Another one of my favourite Mario games. One of my favourite Mario sports games. Actually, I used to play Toadstool Tour all the time. Like, what I would used to do is I actually did this on my um, advent calendar video on uh, Mario Golf. Was I would like do my own competition. So like, because you can like, because you only need one controller to do multiplayer. I would just pick all the characters and then just do a competition with them. And as I sort of showed with Super Rush, it is still quite fun to do that. Uh, yeah, I do think this is the best. I do think this is still the best Mario Golf game. I think I know people like the 3DS one, but I've not really played that one as much. And it might just be nostalgia, but yeah, I've got loads of memories of this game. I will say, does anyone remember the um, Camelot logo? You know where Wario and Waluigi pop up and just like with the like logos. That used to freak me out as a child. Am I the only one who's who was scared by that? I don't know. I think it's just because it came out of nowhere and you weren't expecting it. It just always used to scare me. Just. That's, that's the funny story to mention. Next up we've got uh, Mario Smash Football. So I believe this is Mario... Super Mario Strikers in America, but obviously in the UK we call it football, so they call it Mario Smash Football. Yeah, this is a good game. I still think the Wii version is better. Uh, I do have the Switch version of Mario Strikers now, but I've only played like a bit of it. And from what I played it was okay, but it's obviously nowhere near the level of this and the Wii one. But I'll, I've already talked more about the Wii one on my next sort of clean collection. There's just not, not really much to say about this one, it's just, yeah, if you like football, this will be, this is a good game. And now we've got the two Mario Party games that I have. We've got Mario Party 4 and Mario Party 5. So, yeah, so I really, really want to get the Mario Party game. So I've got, like, so obviously, Recently, the N64 Online is putting the Mario Party games on there. They've got one and two on there, and hopefully three will be on there. So, I now have the four, the first five Mario Party games. I just need Mario Party 6 and 7, and I've got the collection. But I know they're the most expensive ones, and they're the ones that are hard to find. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully one day, I will get those in my collection, and it'll be a wonderful day. I mean, I can always emulate them, because my new laptop can now play... It looks like you can play uh, GameCube games on there quite well if I use my emulator on it. So I'm going to get them emulated. But, you know, you, you just want the physical games, you know. Emulators are fine and that, but you want the physical stuff. But, yeah, I'm, I don't really have much to say about these games individually because I don't, I've not really played much of them. But I, there is a, a time where I am going to try and go through all the Mario Party stuff. Like, obviously, I've been doing Mario Party 1 and 2. When Mario Party 3 comes out on NC4 and I'll play through that game. And then probably once I've done that, I'll, do, I'll play through Mario Party 4 and 5. But yeah, so, yeah, just really happy that I had the Mario Party games and I'm just really hoping I can get 6 and 7. Right, so these next two are technically still part of the Mario series, but they're also not. So first off, we've got our Wario World. Oh, I've got just Wario World. There you go. Yeah, Wario World, again, I've only played like a bit of this one, but my played is pretty fun. It's a very different kind of, uh, I think it's like, more of like a, I guess you would call it like maybe a platformer, beat em up type game, like a 3D brawler sort of. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Obviously, everyone knows this for the infamously great uh, pause menu where Wario just sort of makes random noises. 
And I think, I'm now just like, realizing that the cover of this is that, have you ever seen that, I think it's called like Wario laughing video, it's like this, this cover. So I can't see this cover normally without just Wario just going nuts, but yeah, pretty fun game, it's pretty good. Obviously, if you can find a copy of it, I'd get it. Yeah, next up we've got Donkey Konga. Yep, Donkey Konga, which means I also have, as you can see, the DK Bongos. I like to play my bongos in the morning. Yep, just very sweeping up the funky house scene there. Okay, no one is going to get that reference. No one is going to get that reference. If, if you get that reference, you're amazing. Huh? But yeah, Donkey Kong is just a fun little um, uh, rhythm game. I, I've mentioned before that I like rhythm games. And yeah, I think I got this along with the bongos together. Like Again, my retro shop was selling them and I was able to get them. I, don't, I think you can play it without the bongos, but obviously you want the bongos. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a Jungle Beat, unfortunately, which is like the game that would actually require you to use, like with a platform that uses bongos, but yeah, if you can find them, it's a fun, it's a fun little like thing to play. It's really silly. <laughs> it's like got some really weird, it's got weird songs on it, actually. I think it's got like, oh, was it, it got like, I can't remember, but it's, it's quite fun. All right, next up, next part of the Nintendo stuff, we've got the two Pokemon games I have. So we've got Pokemon Coliseum and uh, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Huh? Oh, so I forgot to mention, yeah, I've got a new table. <laughs> I, I forgot to, to like bring it up, yeah, we've got a new table, so it looks different. Huh? So if you're watching this in just sequential order, I'm sorry. Yeah, Pokemon Coliseum is probably my favourite Pokemon game. Huh? That might just be nostalgia, but I don't care. I just, I really do love this game. I think it's the most interesting. Like, it's a very different kind of Pokemon game. You can only, like catch certain Pokemon, like with the Shadow Pokemon and that. And then Exe Gale of Darkness is the sequel to it, which is still a good game. Like, I remember my friend had Gale of Darkness and I always wanted it. And I was lucky to go to the retro shop and like, my mum bought it for me because she's nice like that. Uh, yeah, like, so I prefer I prefer Coliseum, but I do think Gale of Darkness is great as well. If you can find a copy of both of these, then uh, good luck, because from what I've heard, apparently they are quite hard to find, but like I said, Coliseum was the first Pokemon game I ever played, and it's the one that made me into a Pokemon fan. And I beat it recently in like 2020, and was super happy that I did because it is it is super fun. I I didn't play I haven't played much of Gale of Darkness yet. I got stuck at one point, and that's kind of prevented me from going back to it. But I'm sure one day I will. Huh? Uh, next up, we've got the two uh, Nintendo racing games. So we've got F Zero GX. This game is fantastic. What from, from what I gather, the last F Zero game we ever got, because I don't think they ever made another one. Yeah, I think well they might have done a couple of GBA versions, but this is the last F Zero console game, and I don't understand why because F Zero is so good and this game is so fantastic, like the speed and everything and the it's just so good. I don't, I just genuinely don't understand why Nintendo refused to make another F-Zero game, because it's so good. This game was so good. I don't, like, just do this again and it will be perfect. You, you don't need to do anything else, just do this again, huh? And next up, the other racing game we've got, another one that I haven't seen another entry since this one, um, Rave Race Blue Storm, huh? Yeah, this is fine. I think this was actually a launch title for the system, but yeah, it's okay. It's, again, different kind of racing game, but it's, it's pretty fun. I'd, I'd recommend it if you find it. Find it. And I've got the last two uh, Nintendo games. First off is probably the best game on the system and probably one of the a contender for one of the best games of all time. Um, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Yeah. Like the fact that to this day people are still playing this game is a testament to how beloved it is. And I do like Melee. Like. I do, un I do think there are some annoyances about it. Like, I do think some of the fan base behind this game can be really irritating sometimes. Like the ones who say that there's no other game apart from Melee, and that like everything got ruined after Melee, and they should just do Melee again. It's just, come on. Like, I, I guess I don't want to have that argument of like casual versus competitive players, but like, can we just like just all be together? You know, just all, all be fine together. You know. Like, this is a game that can be enjoyed by both casuals and competitive. But yeah, this is definitely the best one. Like, this is definitely, like... I, actually, I don't know. I'd say this is my second favourite after Ultimate. But, like, 
obviously I would still probably, if I was to play a Smash game, I probably would go and play Ultimate first. But I do still think this is a good game. I do think there's obviously a reason why this is the one that people still go back to. So, yeah. And uh, the last Nintendo game is not really a game, but I think it's interesting because apparently this is quite hard to find now, and that is uh, the Game Boy Player. Yeah, I actually have a Game Boy Player on my GameCube. So yeah, you can see the disc here. Yep. So you plug that, you plug the disc in, and then you plug a Game Boy. You have that thing, this thing at the bottom of your GameCube. You plug the Game Boy Advance in, you put the disc in, and then yeah, you play your Game Boy games, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy games on the TV. Yeah, and it's been really helpful for me because. You know, I, for a long time I didn't actually have, my Game Boy Advance wasn't working, so that was the way I got to play all of those games. I, I mean, I've got my Game Boy Advance working now, but still, I'm probably going to be mostly playing them on the TV, because not only is it easier, but also, like, if I want to record footage, so it's a lot, I can actually record footage of them, so, yeah. But yeah, apparently this is quite hard to come by now, apparently a lot of people saying they can't find one, which is weird, because again, I'm pretty sure it's another case where my game... My GameCube just came with it, huh? so I guess I was quite lucky when I got it, and I just, I just got it when it came with it. Huh? But yeah, kind of, a, I'm kind of a surprised that they never made a DS and 3DS player for the Wii U. Because when you think about it, it would have been perfect, like easily have the the touch screen on the the Wii U gamepad and the top screen on the TV. I think it would have been really good. I would have been, I would have actually have liked it if they'd done that, but yeah. It probably would. It's probably a lot harder than we expect. Alright, now... I know I said that was the end of the Nintendo section, but it kind of isn't, because these next two have Nintendo characters in them, but they're not Nintendo games. And by that, I think you can probably guess that means next up is... Soul Calibur 2. Yep, with uh, the GameCube version had Link as an exclusive character. I believe it was, if you had the PS2 version, it was Heihachi from Tekken. And the Xbox version had Spawn, surprised for some reason. Yeah, oh, because of that, this is easily the best one. Getting to play as Link is so cool. It, this, I mean, even like I know it got like a port on a PS3 and Xbox 360 like years ago, which I actually did pick up when it first got made when it was released. But of course, that one doesn't have Link in it. So even though I have that version, I still wanted this version because it's got Link in it, which is just just great. And I like Soul Calibur as well. So having a Soul Calibur game with uh, Link in it is is really cool. Actually, this has like, got some of the best characters in it. It's, like, it's got Nightmare, it's got Talam in it, like all the best characters in this one. And uh, next up, probably the the weirdest game in my collection, huh? and that is NBA Street version 3. Yeah? And that's because, as you can see here, you can play as Mario and Luigi and Peach in this game. Huh? And that's really weird. I mean, so this is a basketball game. I don't play basketball. I mean, I live in the UK and we don't really care about basketball in the UK. And yeah, the only reason I wanted this game is because you can play as the Mario characters in it, and it's so weird, actually, can you see? Yeah, like, they're, like, actually, like, the actual characters, and they're, like, next to... Like, it's kind of like Mario Odyssey, when he goes to New Donk City, and he's next to the real, like, realistic humans. It's kind of like that, but, like, sort of treated as normal. But it is quite it is quite funny having those characters in here, and that's, like, again, the only reason why I picked it up, but... Yeah. I think mean, there's, there's an SSX game that also has... The Mario characters in it, and I want to get that one too. But yeah, this one's still really funny. I mean, if I remember rightly, it was because the GameCube couldn't use online, and that was that. So like, PS2 and Xbox version had online capabilities to it, but the GameCube version didn't. So it was like a little like, uh, sort of like as a bonus, as a apology, I guess, to not have online. They put Mario and Luigi and Peach in it, which actually, as I said, makes this not the best version of the game. And uh, next up, so next up. It, we got the uh, the Sega collect the Sega section because this, of course, this is the first home console where Sega dropped out. So this was the first time they actually had games for Nintendo systems. So, so let's just go over the two that we obviously know. Uh, we got Sonic Adventure DX and Sonic Adventure Sonic Adventure Two Battle. So, uh, what's everyone's thoughts on these games? Because I've got to be very careful with what I say here. And that's because I'm saying that I think these two games are still good. Look, yes, they haven't aged well. But how many games actually have aged well? Let's be honest here. There are a lot of games out there that we still... A lot of old games that people still love that really haven't aged well. I don't get why Sonic Advent the Sonic Adventure games are like heavily like criticised for not aging well. Like, 
And to be quite frank, I think they're still fun. Like, the Sonic sections are definitely still good. Like, City Escape is brilliant. Like, there are so many cool stages in Sonic Adventure 2. So there's, you know, uh, oh, excuse me. There's City Escape, Metal Harbor, Green Forest is really cool. Like, there are so many cool stages. And same with Sonic Adventure DX with uh, Windy Valley and uh, Seaside. No, is it Seaside? No, Emerald Coast. Speed Highway. So many cool stages in these things. Of course, that's only part of the game. You've got all the other baggage to it. So, because you've got the big to cap stages and Sonic Adventure DX, which I really don't like. And, okay, here's a hot take. I'm going to say it. I don't care. I like the mech sections. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I like the mech sections. I like Gamma's gameplay on Sonic Adventure DX. In fact, I argue that Gamma is like one of the most underrated Sonic characters of all time. Like, his story is really cool. And I don't mind the, the mech sections. I don't mind the mech sections. There. I don't mind the mech sections in Sonic Adventure 2. I think they're good as well. What? Treasure hunting can suck, can go on though. Tre treasure hunting sucks though. I, I've never got into the treasure hunting section, so I would be completely fine if they never got back. In fact, one of the reasons I've never beaten Sonic Adventure 1 is because of the... In fact, yeah, I've never beaten easiest games because of the treasure hunting sections. Because uh, I just hate them so much. But, yeah, still think these are good games and... Hear rumours constantly that we're getting a remake of Sonic Adventure, that like, they're going to completely remake Sonic Adventure 1, and yeah, I'd, I'd buy that. I think Sonic Adventure 1 desperately needs a remake, and I would be really, really interested to get a remake of Sonic Adventure. But, yep, yeah, that's, that's, Sonic, that's the Sonic Adventure section. <laughs> Next up, we've got uh, Super Monkey Ball 2. What? Yeah, I'm going to move the camera up here. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done this, so I, I need to re-familiarise myself with using my camera and that. But yeah, I like Super Monkey Ball too. yeah. Like, Monkey Ball is just a really fun game to play. Like, I remember my uh, my brother's girlfriend, she loves Super Monkey Ball. So, we actually played it over the pandemic once and it was really fun. Which is why, and I was, why I was really upset that the new one on Switch, well actually it came out a few, it actually came out like a few years ago now. But like, basically the latest one that came out. It doesn't have multiplayer in the main game, and I was really annoyed by that because I wanted to buy it so that we could play it together. So that's why I didn't get it until uh, this Christmas because I was in no rush to get it after that. But yeah, we can, we can always go back to play, play this one together because it is fun. We've never actually played the I've actually never played the mini games on here, which is a it's weird because everyone says the mini games are the best part of it. But yeah, I need to go back into this and play the mini games. So. But obviously, I've got the new one, so I'm probably going to be playing that one more because it's on Switch and it's just easy to get. Right, so this next one is sort of similar into the vein of the uh, NBA game, and that's uh, Virtua Striker 3 version 2002. God, that's a mouthful of a title. Yeah, uh, so similar to the Mario, like, NBA thing, you can apparently unlock Team Sonic in this game, like, a, a, son a team with, like, Sonic, Tails and that, but it's, like, really hard to unlock, so I haven't done it yet. But even then, I'm actually kind of glad I did get this game, because, I've obviously, I've, I've, I've mentioned I like, I like football, I've actually been really getting into football lately. And this is like a, uh, I mean this is an arcade game, and I've actually played this in the arcade quite a lot, so it's nice to have a home version of it. So it's it's definitely different to your FIFAs and that, so it's actually a unique football game. Yeah, not much, not much, else, to, yeah, not much else to say, just if you like football, then give it a go. And now we've got the last of the, just the um, regular games, because then after this will be the licensed stuff. And this is the, actually the Capcom section. So first off we've got... Uh, Capcom vs SNK2, let's say EO Millionaire Fighting 2001, or just Capcom vs SNK2 EO, yeah, fighting games have weird titles. Yeah, this is actually really, really good. I think, I've heard that people say that the GameCube version of this isn't very good, and I think I've only played it once, but I enjoyed it. I think I only bought it because I remember um, Maximilian, you know, he did a, a boss rage on this game, and it actually looked really fun, and when I saw a copy of it, I actually, I picked it up because it... It did look fun. Yeah, it does look good. So it is. It is. It is good. I actually would be, wouldn't be against. Hopefully, uh, Capcom and SNK make another game of this because they've never. If they make another Capcom versus SNK, because they haven't done one. For, well, I think this this was the last one. I think I don't think they've done another one. So, yeah, I I I buy another one. Yeah, there's nothing else to say. Just good fighting games. And next up, we've got a uh, beautiful Joe. Yeah, this is like this is a really good game as well. So, I actually tried to beat this not long ago. But I got stuck on the like one of the last missions because you've got to go through a boss rush, and it's so annoying because you've got to like beat all the bosses in like 
a few lives. If you like lose all your lives, you have to go back to the beginning of it. And it's like, I just, I literally just gave up at that point, which is a shame because I was really enjoying it. It's got some really good mechanics behind it. Like the way that you can like slow down, you have to slow down. You can fast forward, you can do more damage that way. It really is a fun game. And I was really, I'm kind of annoyed that Capcom haven't done another, another very, I'm annoyed that Capcom haven't done another beautiful joke because I think there's so much potential behind this con this concept. So I really hope that they do another one. I really hope they Capcom decide to make some new games again because they're just doing the same stuff over and over again. It's Street Fighter and Resident Evil now. I'm pretty sure Capcom. Yeah. But anyways, last of the regular games and another Capcom game that back back to what I was saying. Capcom when they used to make new games. And also, probably the rarest game I own. And it's a shame because it is such a fantastic game. Gotcha Force. Yeah, so, yeah, look, look at that. $7.99. I bet people would be absolutely losing if this was $7.99. So, yeah, this is like one of the rare... I believe, I believe this is the rarest GameCube game. And... Which is, again, such a shame. Because this game is so good. I love this game so much. I've had this game since I was a child. So, like, I could sell this and get some money, but I don't want to because I love this game too much and I would I would hate to lose this game. And also, it's nice to sort of mention, to sort of see that I have, you know, the rare, one of the... It's nice to see that this, like I said, yeah, sorry. This is the, as I said, this is the rarest game I own because, like... I mean, yeah, it's just because it, from what I know, it didn't sell well. Huh? It's just such a shame because... I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's such a fantastic game. So it's like, it's you're basically like it's sort of an arena brawler type thing where you play as like little like robots, uh, and you've got like beat other people, robots up, and it's just you've got like a look, massive collection of stuff, and it's just so good. Watch gameplay of this. Get emulate it. I don't care. Like just find if you can play this game, please do because it is so so good. Uh, and yeah, yeah, sad that this is a rare game now. Huh? All right, and now we go to the license game section. So let's start with what most of these sections involve, which is the wrestling game. So we've got WrestleMania X8, uh, WrestleMania 19, I believe that is. Yeah, WrestleMania 19, uh, WWE Day of Reckoning, and Day of Reckoning 2. Huh? These are all the WWE games. I believe this is basically all of the GameCube games, ignore, except for like Crush Hour, but I've already got that one on PS2, so I don't need that one again. I've not played these ones as much as I have the PS2 games, because obviously I grew up with the PS2 games, but I don't... I grew up with the PS2, so I'm more interested in those games, but from what I've played, yeah, they're pretty fun. Um, WrestleMania 19, that's the most interesting one, because that's the one that's got a revenge mode on it, which is basically where you just have to... I think it's like, you have to destroy WrestleMania, and so you have like all these weird like arenas that you can fight in, and you can like got to throw people off buildings and that. It is actually a fun... It is a fun mode and something that I kind of wish the newer wrestling games would bring back. You know, it's a nice sort of like arcade style thing. But yeah, I think Day of Reckoning 1 and 2 actually have pretty good story modes in them as well. So I've got, I've got to sit down and play these at some point because, yeah. But yeah. And then X8 is probably the weakest of all of them because there's not really much on it. What have you seen? Rob Van Damme's on the cover. That's cool. I like Rob Van Damme. That's cool to see him, huh? Yeah. So that's pretty much all I have to say about these games. I... I Again, I'm sorry, if, I, if I've got nothing to say and I've got nothing to say, huh? Oh, speaking of nothing to say, here's the other wrestling game I have, uh, Legends of Wrestling. Again, I mentioned uh, Legends of Wrestling 2 and the other one on the PS2 version. Yeah, just another fine, just another pretty rubbish wrestling game, but whatever. Still fun to have it, I guess. So that was all the wrestling games. Now we've got the, uh, the, Dis the Disney section, because of course... And by Disney, I mean... And again, by Disney, I mean... Disney, because it's Disney and stuff they own. Well, first off, we actually have a Disney game, and that's um, Disney's Donald Duck PK. So I actually, I've had this game since I was a child as well, and I actually really like this game, which is a shame, because from what I've gathered, people don't like it. And that sucks, because I really do love it. It's like, it's weird. So like you see, it's Donald Duck, and he's like this superhero type thing, but they also give him a voice, which is kind of odd as well. I think he's actually voiced by Rob, by Rob Paulson, which is quite cool. Huh? So, yeah, but it's like, it is a fun little, like, I guess third-person shooter type game. I'd say give it a chance, because I think it's quite fun, but again, I'm very much nostalgia-blind on that stuff, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, next up we've got the two Star Wars games, I'll do these two together as well. So we've got uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars uh, Rogue Leader, which is the second Rogue Squadron game. So again, I've not played much of Clone Wars, but I had Rogue Leader when I was younger. I sold it because I didn't really like it, and then I re-bought it because I wanted to get all the Star Wars games. And, and having played it now, I still don't really like it. There's something about Rogue Leader I just don't, I can't get behind. I don't really know what it is. I... I really struggle at it. Like, maybe I need to, like, just look up some online tutorials on how to, to play it, but, yeah. And Clone Wars is, like, a weird... So it's, like, a vehicle sort of game. Kind of similar to Rogue Leader in a way, yeah. But it's also got, like, foot mission, Like, on-foot missions where you play as, like, the like, the Jedi and that. And I remember, actually, even when, it, when I got it and I played it, I remember, like, not liking it too, so much because it was really awkward, the on-foot stuff. But, yeah. Obviously, people love Rogue Leader, and I mean, yeah, this was also a launch title. It actually looks, it, this game actually looks really good for a GameCube launch title. Like, if you haven't seen this game, have a look at it because it really does a good job of like, like in an era where like realistic stuff didn't look the greatest. I think this is a game that's actually held up well. Maybe it is because it's sci-fi and that, so that uh, it holds up a lot more. But yeah, not much to say about those two, and definitely not much to say on this last one, and that is a. Uh, X-Men 2 Wolverine's Revenge. Yes. Yeah, I only bought this game recently. It's a good, but I've not really played much of it. It's weird, like, even though this is like, it says it's an X-Men 2 game, like it's got Hugh Jackman on the cover, for what I know, it's actually not connected to the film at all, which is kind of strange. Like, um, cause like Wolverine's actually voiced by uh, Mark Hamill in this game, which is quite interesting. But yeah, like from what I can gather, it's not nothing to do with the film. It's just used to market the game. But then again, I've only played that the first that bit of the first mission, and I think I got stuck on the first mission, so I don't really know what I'm saying. But yeah, I'll definitely give this a go at some point. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. So now I've got the last games, just the last licensed games, so it's got no sort of category, just random stuff. So we'll start off with the one I probably got the least to talk about, and that's a uh, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. Yeah, I've only played a bit of this one, but yeah, it's this is the Godzilla game that we all want. It's just you just get to mash people up. I think this is probably the this is probably the best one, but I don't know. Like Godzilla fans can sort of tell me which one the best is. I think it probably is this game because it's again you just destroy monsters and that and destroy cities and it's pretty fun. Uh, next up we've got uh, Tony Hawk's Underground Two. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Again, it's just another Tony Hawk game and they're all pretty good. I I I think I mentioned that in I think Tony Hawk's Underground One is my favourite. This one's okay, but I don't think it's as good. I'll say one good thing about this game, you can play a Shrek in it, but unfortunately I haven't unlocked Shrek yet and there's no codes to unlock Shrek straight away, which sucks. I want to play a Shrek! I want to skateboard a Shrek! That's just the best thing ever! <laughs> right, now these, these last three I've got a lot to talk about. Well, I say a lot, but like these are games I have a lot of memories of, so first off we've got uh, Digimon Rumble Arena 2. Huh? So, I, unfortunately it wasn't in my PS1 collection, but I had a Digimon Rumble Arena 1 when I was younger, but I unfortunately don't have it anymore. So when I got this, so it was one of those things where when I was in the shop and I saw the sequel to this, I was like, yes, sequel to Rumble Arena, Rumble Arena. And yeah, pretty fun. I'd say this is basically just a Smash Bros. clone with Digimon in it. But I still think it's fun. Like, obviously the cool thing with Digimon is that because they Digi Evolve, you like have to build up sort of your meter and then the more damage you do and the more like things you collect, you can then Digi Evolve into your next sort of form. Yeah, it is really fun, and I really do enjoy it. Obviously, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Digimon fan. Like, I know a, 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 I know bits and pieces about Digimon. Like, I definitely remember it when I was younger, but it, I just like it because it's fun. It's a fun sort of game to play. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Madagascar, the Madagascar game. Huh? I actually really like this game. I actually think this game pretty, pretty fun, pretty underrated. Like, well. Underrated in the like realm of animated movie games, but I think this is pretty fun. Yeah, I, I do think it is pretty good. So like, you obviously get to play as all four of the the characters. You get to play as the penguins at one on one level, which is pretty cool. You just you just go for the movie. Like, is it? This is my this is my favorite era of licensed games. Is the random movie games that just go where you just go for the film, huh? And I do think they actually do a good job of doing it in this game. Again, not going to win awards, uh, but I do think it is pretty cool. And actually, if I remember rightly, is this is it? Oh, it's Toys for Bob! Oh yeah, the thing I said to Crash 4! Yeah, that's that's really funny that this was then done by... <laughs> this was then... The, the guys who did this then did Crash Bandicoot 4, which is just... 
really funny, which is really just really weird that that's, a, that's happened. <laughs> but yeah, again, I, I do like this game. I do think it's pretty cool. And the last game in this video is SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Huh? This is, so this was like the first 3D platformer for SpongeBob and yeah, it's no battle for Bikini, it's no battle for Bikini Bottom, I'll tell you that. Huh? So when I was younger, I had the PS2 version of this. Huh? And if you know anything about the PS2 version of this game, you will know about the infamous saving glitch. Huh? So if you don't know what that, that is, it's, there are times when the game tries to load but the game can't load for some reason and the game crashes and sends you back to the, like, the disk menu. Huh? And this game, and also this game doesn't have auto-saving, so I hoped you were saving, because if you didn't save, then you just lost all your project in progress and you have to do it all again. Huh? Yeah, that, that's why I never liked this game when I was younger, so I made sure to get the GameCube version when I saw it again. And even being able to play it, it's not great. Huh? Like... It's the first 3D platformer. It was the first Spongebob 3D platformer, and I guess you could argue that what... I mean, I can't even say, I was going to say, oh, they learned the lesson, but because... No, the people who made this game, they then went out of business out of it, after this game, because, as mentioned, it was... It wasn't very good, and the glitch kind of... Destroyed... Well, cause, you know, because people would have bought the game, and then obviously would have taken it back because of the glitch. And of course, I didn't like it because of the glitch, and... Yeah, it's a very disappointing game, unfortunately. But hey, Spongebob game's pretty good now. Like... I just recently got a Cosmic Shake, because that just came out um, a few days ago. And I'm really enjoying it, I think it's... I think it's on the level of Battle for Bikini Bottom for me, yeah? But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry it took so long, but I, you know, I wanted to do the Advent Candor stuff, and I decided to just, with Christmas and all that, I just decided to take a, a long break. But um, one of my friends told me that he really enjoyed these videos, so I kind of decided to continue them. So it, it gave me the confidence to continue these videos, so... Hopefully I'll do more of these soon, and hopefully I will be able to do my other videos as well. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!